So this is a 37 year old male, basically about a week and a half ago, he was just running and felt a pop in the left calf. He tore that maybe like five, six years ago, but recovered after about three weeks or so. So you're tender right here, huh? Yeah. How about over here? Yeah. How about up here? Not as bad. Not so much. But mostly here, it's got a little yeah. ecchymosis there too. The most likely spot to tear it is right there, the medial gastroc. Anything here in the Achilles? It hurts a little bit when I walk. But this isn't too bad. No. Got a normal feeling Achilles tendon. It's gonna give a little squeeze here. Just try to bear with me, okay? So we've got a negative Thompson. So they don't look too much different, other than, you know, different tattoos. <laughs> so here's our first clip. Right side of the screen is distal. We're looking at the medial gastrocnemius muscle. And you're not really tender here too much, are you? No. And we're going distally now. Yeah. It's starting to get tender. And here we are, just a little bit of irregularity there, that distal muscle. It's got a little a little bleeding. And um, here you can see some irregularity, that distal medial gastrocnemius muscle. It may have a little irregularity, the plantaris tendon as well, that's underneath it. Uh, but the main thing is a torn distal medial gastrocnemius muscle, your typical location for that. You can see a fair amount of blood under the distal medial gastrocnemius muscle, and you can see how the muscle fibers themselves are bowling up distally, consistent with the tear. Obviously, you want to make sure this is not a venous structure, which Kaladopo confirms. That as you don't see any flow in this end echoic area. Here's this lateral gastrocnemius muscle, the, the tip of it, which looks okay. I'm not seeing anything. Are you tender over here or not really? Not as much as the Normal looking lateral gastrocnemius muscle. Again, here's a thin plantaris tendon that starts laterally at the lateral aspect of the knee and then goes medially. And here you can appreciate the muscle layers. Again, you got plantaris underneath that soleus and the flexor house as long as muscle. Here's the Achilles tendon, just following that up, which looks okay. You can see the underlying Kager's fat pad and the soleus muscles as it tapers into the Achilles tendon. The, uh, Achilles tendon, which looks okay. Here's the Achilles in a short axis view or axial plane, which looks normal. Now we're going to look at this little muscle tear in an axial plane. Again, right side of the screen is lateral. Here we are, we're at 1350, kind of like mid medial gastrocnemius. And now we're going distally. And actually, this kind of really compresses easily with pressure, so you don't want to put too much pressure on it. See how it's just kind of that distal gastrocnemia, medial gastroc is just kind of floating in a little bit of fluid there. Again, here you see that blood that surrounds the distal medial gastrocnemius muscle. And that's what we're seeing on the uh, sagittal views. Right side of the screen is lateral. We're doing the lateral gastrocnemius at 1352. Just looking at the muscle, which looks okay. Normal appearing lateral gastrocnemius muscle. You can see the underlying soleus muscle. Okay, we're about a month out from the tear of the left medial gastrocnemius muscle. We're gonna go ahead and just do an ultrasound, see if the hematoma um, has resolved mostly. So this was kind of a surprise to me. Uh, he was complaining of some swelling distally and some stiffness in the leg, but I didn't expect to see this much fluid on his follow-up. And here you can see essentially this very large layer of fluid that's between the medial gastrocnemius muscle and the soleus muscle. And again, here you can see that blood spreading the plane between those two muscles. Underneath that, compared to the first one, he said he was doing some more walking, right? You said you're doing more walking? Yeah. You can see how it's pretty compressible here. Almost like a closed the gloving injury of the muscle layers, one and getting sloughed kind of on the, the other. Medial gastrocnemius muscle. Or do an uh, axial view here. Right side of the screen is medial, so that's the medial gastrocnemius muscle, lateral gastroc, or 819. See all that fluid essentially that built up between kind of underneath the medial and the lateral gastrocnemius muscle. Between that and the soleus, it appears. And also the soleus muscle is somewhat irregular looking. There may be some injury to that as well. funny, on exam, it didn't, I didn't really appreciate it, that, that swelling, but it's kind of like deep right within the middle of the leg. It just feels tight, huh? Yeah. 
So we decided to drain it since he had a lot of fluid. We're using a 16 gauge needle, clip. one inch needle. And if you notice, we're actually trying to avoid the fibers of the distal medial gastrocnemius muscle. Essentially where that medial gastrocnemius muscle ends, right at that point we're going in. And all that we're going through is essentially yeah, subcutaneous tissue, and subcutaneous yeah. fat, and then right into the hematoma. Um, we're having somebody put a little pressure proximally to help extend that space where the blood is and help drain whatever we can get out. Also, we're using gravity as well. So his leg was a little bit on a decline to help all that fluid collect towards the needle. All right, so we're about five weeks out of an aspiration of the left calf. Uh, we drained a fair amount of fluid, and that was at about a month or so into the injury. So now he's a little over two months into the injury. Feeling a lot better. Uh, the swelling did go down significantly, but he still feels a little bit of stiffness and swelling. There's a little bit of pitting, kind of edema in the proximal medial leg, um, but overall doing pretty well. So I kind of want to just do an ultrasound just to kind of see exactly, you know, what he looks like. Uh, so right side of the screen is distal. So it kind of looks like it's just it's not really compressible, but... It... So unfortunately the hematoma did recur, and here you can see that it's organizing. It's not compressible, so you're not going to get much if you try to drain it. Again, you can just see that fluid collection underneath that medial gastrocnemius muscle, between that and the soleus. So here's an axial plane, and again, that hematoma is essentially just under the medial gastrocnemius muscle, between that and the soleus. 13-12, we're continuing to go distal just centering that hematoma. You can see it's organizing. So here the hematoma is hyperechoic. Depends on what part you look at. Some parts are anechoic, but essentially the hematoma is organizing itself. Uh, he's just about four months into the injury uh, in total. He's doing a lot better. Uh, no pain with walking. He was able to run just for a couple of seconds just to kind of run to his car or something, which didn't seem to bother him. Uh, he says the swelling has also gotten better. Ultrasound we did last time demonstrated uh, still a lot of organizing hematoma in the calf, so let's see what it looks like out of more curiosity. Does this bother you now? No. Any pain over here? No. This is where you had most of your pain before, correct? Yeah. Our right side of the screen is distal. You can see that uh, organizing hematoma underneath medial gastrocnemius muscle. So here you can see how the hematoma has become much more hyperechoic, consistent with more scarring and organization over time. Right here, approximately between, looks like between that and soleus. You go distal, you can kind of make it out. So as you go distal, you can still see some more anechoic signal consistent with the blood, but again, getting much more scarring as he's laying down collagen and forming this scar within this hematoma. Here we got the lateral gastrocnemius. We're at 915. You can see it tapering nicely. Start here approximately 916. Just going down again, you can kind of see that hematoma formation. Again, much brighter or hyperechoic as compared to his last ultrasound, consistent with scarring and organization of this hematoma. Again, 916, just going distally. Here it almost looks like an Achilles tendon, but this is just the scarring of the hematoma sitting above the, the soleus at this point. It blends in with the Achilles, it looks like. Going up, 916. 